Hello, everyone. I am really appreciate uh, to be here. Um, probably you can see my presentation. If you see it as a small screen, you can uh, double click on it and it will become bigger. And so we are ready to go to a wonderful world of static analysis. Uh, as already was said, I am Alexander Kravchuk. I am a Magenta Master Maker 2020, so active contributor and uh, Magenta maintainer, uh, certified uh, Magenta uh, Adobe expert uh, in the uh, development and uh, business practitioner. And uh, I'm working as a technical uh, lead at uh, Waymo uh, Dubai company. And um, yeah, um, the first thing which I understand when I uh, become a Magenta Master that it uh, have actually no impact on the, my code. And uh, today we are going to uh, talk what we can do uh, to stop doing like uh, you know this, and in result don't uh, receive uh, uh, consequences like uh, this. And think which can really improve the quality of your code is of code the testing, especially when you're using an automated testing. And uh, now I uh, would like uh, to play. Uh, uh, would like to play a small game with you. Uh, I will show you an image, uh, um, some diagram of the kind of tests, and you should uh, try to get uh, to guess uh, which kind of uh, test it's about. Uh, please uh, use uh, the chat, uh, the session chat, and yeah, so there is the first one. Yes, you are right, this is a unit testing. So we have like a isolated piece of code and we have a test which uh, interact with it. Uh, test receives some input information, which it will going to be passed to the code and compare the results of the execution with the actually expected results and calls, data and et cetera. And uh, let's let a little bit uh, complicate the task. Your suggestions? Yes, you are right. This is an uh, integration test. So uh, now we have like a not only isolated piece of code, but our code is interacting with other uh, code of the system. It also uh, can interact with some uh, resources like a database, or it can be like a elastic search and etc. It still receives some input information, uh, pass it to the uh, test, receive input information, pass it to the code, and compare the result of the execution with. Uh, uh, expected results and this one yes you are right this is a functional test so the main idea is that we have like a two different uh, uh, applications uh, first one is our actual application second one is the test application and we execute testing not the code itself uh, working with uh, the, an interface. In our case, it can be like a browser client or it can be like a CURL client. And the last one. Yes, you're right. This is a static test. So uh, the main idea is that we like in uh, replacing uh, input parameters with the code itself. And we use special rules to check that uh, our uh, code is following or uh, not following the specific rules. And I think the most beautiful part of this uh, that if we are increasing the code base, uh, we are not uh, like losing the code coverage itself. I mean, the coverage of the static tests. So um, probably, uh, probably uh, someone. Uh, know that um, okay today we are going to talk about uh, we start from the what kind of magenta static tests uh, we have in magenta 2 uh, then we we'll continue about uh, talking about code styles uh, how we can optimize code styles check and how they works then we'll proceed uh, with uh, abstract syntax we'll talk about uh, such features as abstract syntax and abstract syntax tree then we'll continue with static analysis and static analysis tools and the most uh, you know uh, probably uh, helpful part of the presentation is how to make all the things uh, work for you and uh, make a benefit for you. 
And uh, yeah, probably as someone know that uh, Magento has a folder which called uh, dev. Uh, its folder has subfolder tests and subfolder static. And uh, if you uh, can look into this folder, you can find that there are uh, four uh, different groups of tests that can be found. First one, it's live code test. Uh, we will return back uh, to it a little bit later. Then there's JSTS, which is a JavaScript uh, code style test. They are used to be run uh, with uh, Jasmine and uh, can be configured with a JSON file. Then there's uh, integrity tests, uh, test wrote uh, on the uh, PHP unit, and they uh, used to check the sanity of your application. Uh, for example, check that all your models has uh, correctly declared dependencies, or uh, your placid files uh, have um, the correctness namespace mentioned. I mean that uh, the, sub the subfolders are matching the actual namespaces, and et cetera. And uh, of course, there is a legacy test which uh, try uh, help us uh, to avoid uh, mistakes from the past. About live code test group, uh, it has like four subgroups. Uh, each uh, subgroup it depends on the extension which it's going to check. Uh, for most uh, groups, it's uh, just a code sniffer with uh, specific rules uh, to validate the code style. But for PHP, it's more advanced. It's like uh, six uh, different approaches in tooling. Um, it's not only test the code styles, but also code mess, uh, copy paste uh, detector, uh, strict types and PHP compatibility, and uh, static analysis uh, tool. And uh, yeah, let's talk a little bit about the code analysis and uh, the code style, analysis of the code style and how uh, we can uh, optimize it. And when we are talking about the optimization, first uh, uh, thing which we can find is the uh, algorithm, how we can uh, work with. Yeah, uh, Let's check into this code example. Same situation that we are receiving this code uh, for the code review. And uh, first thing which we are trying to uh, use is to uh, read it. Um, and um, you, you you know you can read in a really many different um, variations. So you can start reading by symbol by symbol. You can read by words, or we can read uh, like a line by line, separated by new line symbols. Actually, there is really big variety, and uh, fortunately, we are working with the best language of the uh, best programming language, and PHP provide possibility uh, to receive uh, the actual list of uh, tokens or how the php interpreter uh, understand the code which you are you are writing in result we will ask we could ask php to provide us a list of tokens for this uh, piece of the code and uh, it will show us output like this and uh, you know from this output we can easily say that it's actually hard to understand anything but if you uh, if you could pass these tokens to the code sniffer tool, it will say that you when you forget to add a new line symbol in the end of the file. But uh, the most powerful thing that uh, it still provides the possibility to find sub subsequences of uh, tokens. For example, if you could uh, see the tokens of a function declaration, that means that there should be a white space then uh, and a function name. Or there can be no function name because it can be an anonymous function. Then it could be a string which represents the typing. And if we have a typing string, string it will mean that we then should have a white space uh, token and then a variable name. Or there can be like a no variable and all of these tokens will be passed. In any way, it uh, provides us possibility to specify uh, rules of subsequences of tokens which we would like to have and which we would like to emit. In result, it's a uh, easy approach to build uh, automatization for the code styles. And unfortunately, um, it only can check that your code is looking well, but it cannot understand your code. Uh, it uh, do not understand the context and uh, what uh, code, uh, code is uh, consist of. It's only, you know, they understand the symbols and the tokens. Uh, to work with the context, they are more uh, advanced thing exists. Uh, like a abstract syntax uh, approach, uh, which uh, we're going to be familiar with uh, abstract syntax tree, one of the uh, representation approach of the abstract syntax. Um, to understand what is it, let's look again into our example. So uh, we have like um, 
on the top level of the execution we have like uh, um, two uh, two ways to go uh, first one is a function decoration and the second one is the call of the function uh, inside of the function we have like if statement with uh, like uh, three possible branches of the execution uh, if we could uh, ask uh, to um, split this code into the tokens and build uh, the abstract syntax tree from the tokens we will receive something like this uh, it's actually pretty the same so on the top level we have like uh, two sub nodes one with the function decoration and the echo statement with the function call it passing an argument then we for a function decoration we have like parameters and statements we actually have one statement it's if with condition and statement which will be executed if if condition met else if is uh, same it has a condition and statement which will be executed and else uh, which has its um, own uh, statements and this is uh, pretty it so uh, this is abstract syntax tree and uh, it's uh, actually provided a possibility to uh, have a uh, context so we can traverse this tree we can uh, search for uh, deepness of your code execution in some way we can understand how uh, your code is complex is which means that if uh, you have a deeper tree for some functions or some method methods probably it's a nice method which should be refactored and uh, these things actually is phpmd is using uh, to uh, it use the uh, abstract syntax tree to build uh, Build it from tokens and uh, analyze it uh, with also using the PHP reflections, collect different metrics of uh, abstract syntax tree of your code and provide you outputs and highlighting some possible problems of uh, uh, of over complicated code or uh, as it called mess. And uh, PHPMD is using library called pdepend. There is also one more popular library exists and more advanced i think it's php parser php parser was created by nikita popo and one of the beautiful things which it uh, provide possibility to do is uh, to use a visitor to traverse this uh, tree uh, with the visitor uh, you can subscribe for two uh, events leave not and enter not enter not will be called uh, the first time when you see the uh, this node uh, it means like when you enter in then it will uh, traverse our child of this node and uh, will return uh, outside from the node, which means that last time you uh, will see this node, and then it will call uh, the leave node event. And, and um, it provides possibility not only to uh, look and collect some information, but also modify the tree. For example, if you would like to create some visitor which could uh, check our uh, code and um, remove all uh, forgotten war dams which we just committed and forget to add or just uh, forget uh, to remove i mean uh the code will look like this that's uh, it looks uh, a little bit strange but not anything difficult so we have like leave node subscription and we check in that uh, our node is expression it's function call at uh, the name is war dump and we return signal to remove node and it's, it's pretty it and then we can, of course, receive the modified abstract syntax tree and uh, convert it again to the code with receiving the refactored uh, code. And probably you start to think that, oh, it will be nice to have possibility to create like more user-friendly uh, API and build a tool which could uh, refactor your code automatically by just specifying some rules. Uh, fortunately, this niche already taken. Uh, the tool is called PHP Rector. It's a code reconstruction tool. It's used abstract syntax tree and static analyzer to modify and refactor your code according to specific rules which you can uh, specify. It have like a very, very wide, uh, extensible uh, API which you can um, interact with uh, to build your own like refactoring scenarios. And uh, the really great things. Uh, how it impacted on the Magento. It was uh, just uh, a few months ago, uh, we had a release of Magento 2.4. And uh, during the release, uh, we had an upgrade of PHP unit library from version 6 to version 9. Uh, with uh, PHP Rector 2, there was done a migration of uh, 30,000 of uh, unit, unit tests. It was like mostly automatical, but uh, I think it's really, really great approach uh, because otherwise <laughs> to refactor and uh, fix some much amount of unit tests by hands it will be uh, some 
kind of this work. And so let's finally talk about static analysis and let's talk which steps we need to proceed to make a proper static analysis. Uh, first of all, we need to upload code base or some code which we would like to analyze. Then we uh, split it in, into the tokens. We already talked that we can do it with PHP tokenizer and uh, code sniffer can also use these tokens to check your uh, code style. Then we can uh, build abstract syntax tree with uh, PHP parser, for example. And then we can analyze abstract syntax tree or with static analyzer or for example, PHP MD and print results. So what's the approach of the static analyzers and what's the difference with uh, PHP MD? Uh, they provide possibility to check that your syntax is correct, probably nothing new. Uh, then it provides possibility to check that all your used methods, function classes, and variables, uh, and constants, of course, they are exist in the code, and you are not using something which will lead to you uh, for the error. Uh, it also can verify the accuracy of your PHP docs, that uh, all your mentioned parameters, return times, and etc. are the same in the, as the function signature. And yeah, it can highlight the dead code. For example, some statements if, which will be never executed and uh, probably uh, some code which can be easily, uh, so some complex code which you can um, refactor and you know, like make less complex. And it's provide possibility to validate input and output data types, which means that, for example, if your method is going to return some Boolean, it will check that in all places, it's a return Boolean, but not string or some numeric values. And uh, the same way, if you expect to receive as an uh, argument uh, some object, it will check that you are there really, this object will be passed, not, not such null values or some kind of string, which could lead to the fatal error. And yeah, which kind of uh, static tools, uh, static analysis tools or analyzers we have nowadays. Uh, nowadays, um, the three most popular. First one is uh, FAN, which is seems to be like an orthodox so, uh, PHP static analyzer because it was founded by uh, uh, Lender Frasm, uh, founder of the PHP. Um, Psalm, which was uh, founded uh, by um, Vimeo company and PHP Stan, which was wrote, written by uh, some programmers from the Czech. And when the uh, question comes to the Magento, which static analyzer start to use, uh, the answer was really obvious. Uh, the problem that Magento has abused using of uh, magic um, methods for uh, getters and setters in data object. And PHP Stan is uh, the only static analyzer which can work with it. It provides the API so you can uh, write the, your own logic how to you work should work with these magic methods. And it also can be run for some specific files. For example, fun can be run only for the whole code, code base. And we just can imagine which terrible things we can find if you start to analyze the whole Magenta code base. And uh, yeah, it will use your, PHP stand will use your afterward if you have some classes which it cannot find. Just to do not show that class not exist, it will uh, load it with your afterload. And yeah, it has a really powerful and extendable APIs. So you can find uh, many different extensions which you can install to them with uh, different rules. And it has like a nine level of uh, checks from the zero to eight. Also, that it has a uh, special extension for uh, really, really strict uh, typing. And yeah, it has a pro version. Pro version provide possibility to use a browser UI uh, to uh, receive the errors, not only in the console, and also it provide possibility to fix uh, the problems. For example, if you have like some issue with uh, undeclared property in your code, it will like provide you interactive interface with possible options how to fix this issue. You can declare it in the a PHP doc of the class, or you can uh, declare it as a, a property, as class property, or you can refactor it to the variable. Uh, so it will like uh, have a really uh, nice uh, interface uh, to deal with uh, this static analysis. And uh, let's talk about PHP stand in Magento 2. Uh, it was added since Magento 2.4.0. Uh, now, nowadays, it's used uh, the first level uh, of uh, the checks. And it also uh, added uh, the support of uh, Magento magic methods in uh, Magento 2.4.1. And yeah, it uh, also 
customization of the Magento. It provides possibility to skip some uh, violations if you really cannot fix it or have no idea how to make it correctly, or it just not worth it. And yeah, finally, the most practical, probably most useful thing of my uh, most useful part of my presentation is how, is how to make all these things work for you. Uh, first of all, let's talk about how what Magento already have uh, to work with this static analysis. Uh, Magento has a different click commands um, to provide possibility to run um, tests with uh, Bin Magento. But unfortunately, they are not so uh, you know, not so clear and not so easy to understand. Let's check them together. Uh, it provides possibility uh, to run like uh, dev test uh, run static. It will run only static tests with the uh, configuration of which you mentioned in the PHP unit XML file. Um, if you will run static all, it will uh, add to this static test also running of the legacy tests. Um, even you will ask to uh, run the integrity tests, it will uh, run static and legacy tests and also include some uh, extended integrity tests, which for, for some reasons were placed in the integration test folder. I really don't know why. And uh, yeah, well, the last one is um, possibility to run only legacy tests, say Magento Clay. If we could talk about more advanced things, um, we can talk about how to run the full scan. With the, code, uh, with the code styles and uh, static analysis checks. Uh, first of all, we need to have our PHP unit XML configuration file. There is already a sample file in dev test static, which uh, has a configuration to run live code tests and uh, integrity tests. Uh, in my case, uh, it looks like this. There is only live code tests because they are really fast and uh, provide a really uh, a lot of um, useful output and what we need to the important thing which we need to do is the mention fact that uh, test code style is full scan uh, as a one the value should be one uh, then we can just simply run the php uh, unit with uh, provided config file and it will execute the full scan but uh, in 99 percent of the cases i believe that you don't really need it uh, because uh, first of all it will check the whole code base and uh, then it will um, have uh, also a big load for the tooling which you use. And I don't really uh, think that PHP uh, stand will survive under this, uh, under such pressure, especially if you are talking about the Magento with its huge code base. But uh, we can also uh, make a partial scan. Uh, for this, we need to edit our PHP unit XML file and uh, disable the flag, just set it zero. Then we need, or we can create a bash script. It will looks like this. Um, what you need uh, to, what you should to change that is um, a repo URL, which means the, your project uh, repo, uh, git repo, and uh, the main branch name. What it will do, it will, uh, for example, when you're working like you have a main branch and you made a checkout to the feature branch, you commit some changes in the uh, feature branch, and uh, then if it's running this script, uh, it will uh, collect all files which you had changed in this feature branch and run the static check only for them. This is the same approach which Magento used to check uh, the code uh, on the GitHub with all the contributions. And uh, yeah, it's a really useful thing uh, which you can use in your CI CD uh, integrations because it can be like an very easily run with uh, Bash. So, and uh, sorry, Alexander, your time will run out in minutes. Yeah, it's okay. Prepare the wrap up. Uh, yeah, it's okay. Um, okay, so um, the last but not least thing is how to uh, we can run the static tests uh, before git commit actually. Um, First of all, you need to edit a PHP unit file and disable full scan because you certainly don't need it during the git commit. Uh, or for example, if you are using uh, the static test for, for your CI CD, uh, you can have like two different config files. For example, for CI CD, you can use more heavy checks like to include some integrity tests. And uh, you need to create a git hook, um, pre-commit uh, hook file in the git hooks pre-commit. 
and add content like this. First string will clean the cache, which we talk about this bash script, which will collect difference between uh, branches. Uh, this uh, the, the whole approach that Magento uh, static test, they will look like, okay, so we have like uh, some cache changes. I mean, the difference between between branches, we will run test for them. If you will remove this, uh, these files, it will look only for your git diff output and we'll run test for it. So it's a really cool approach how to uh, commit only uh, changes which uh, are meeting your coding standards. And uh, the last but not least thing that you can add a flag uh, no verify to your git commit um, and it will skip all the checks. It's really required for some, for some uh, hot fixes which you would like to deliver to when you don't have time to think about the code styles. Uh, there are some useful links. Probably they will be useful for you when this presentation will be shared. Um, the internet and i'm really appreciate and really thank you for your attention and it's uh, time for your questions thank you alexander thank you thank you again for the presentation it's pretty solid and uh, i had a couple of questions by myself but they got answered during the presentation itself so it's, it's pretty awesome uh, your attendees, please post your questions to the chat. We still have like seven minutes for them. So Alexander will be able to help you. Okay, so the first question is from Atish. Uh, can we use the dev test static command uh, for the custom module development? Um, okay, the idea that, um, yeah, um, how can I can say, uh, yes, uh, yes, you can. <laughs> uh, so, for example, the idea that uh, what it will do, it will uh, provide some uh, encapsulation uh, for um, uh, like a colon PHP unit uh, directly. It will, like, um, if you're talking about uh, the full scan, yeah, we will create in our PHP unit XML. And if you will leave it uh, there and uh, run with Magento a console like dev tests uh, static check, it will use your PHP uh, unit XML to uh, make the check. So uh, to check your uh, module, uh, you um, you need to, um, you could leave, you could use this uh, partial a partial scan approach. For example, when you have like your main branch and you create in your module branch, you commit in all changes in the module branch using this bash script. And in result, it will uh, execute the check for the uh, only files in your module. About some easy approach to only mention the path to the module and run static tests for them. Uh, there are no one actually right now, but I believe it can be contributed in the future uh, because uh, it's uh, the behavior of uh, these tests are a little bit uh, another than uh, any other kind of like an integration or unit tests. Thank you, Alexander. Um, I have uh, one question. Um, we are talking about the pre-commits check, he checks here as well as the CI checks. Uh, they were partially covered at the end of the presentation. So my question would be, uh, would it be easy to not to rely on uh, that uh, XML config uh, or how to cover the actual changes that we are going to commit with, with that configuration? check our code before the commit or during the CI check? I mean, the, the code that was actually changed, not the... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I understand. Um, yeah, actually, it's uh, um, the, the same approach that uh, they shared just a few slides. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, the, the idea of the uh, this static test and how they use um, how Magento use them is uh, if we have uh, files uh, placed with um, this, you know, cached and collected changes, uh, 
it will use uh, to run all these tests for them. But if we can uh, just uh, run with, uh, we just can just run static tests without passing flag for the full scan, and there will be like uh, no files uh, cached. It will only so, uh, select your git div, uh, collect all changed files, which mean that you still, uh, you um, didn't commit, uh, they are shown in the git div. And it will uh, run the scan only for them, which will uh, means that uh, if this test will pass, that you will uh, certainly uh, commit files which are matching the code standards and all these checks. So the, the, the idea is uh, to uh, remove this uh, cache it and uh, collect it. Uh, changes uh, which we uh, used to look uh, during this, uh, you know, the partial scan section. Thank you very much for the answer. Do we have any other questions? The chat is empty for them. Okay. Uh, Thank you, Alexander. Thank you so much for the presentation. Thank you all for this session and uh, for the discussion. Uh, in case you have some additional questions, uh, feel free to reach out to our speaker during the networking time at the chat rooms. Now we have uh, seven minutes to switch to the next session you will attend. Don't be late and don't miss the beginning. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Have a nice conference.